Hey everyone, welcome to Coffee and Darts episode 54. This is going to be an exciting episode. We have Jason Watt joining us, the bearded dart guy, or I should say, aka the bearded dart guy. This is going to be fun. We're going to talk virtual darts. We're going to talk about just what he's got going on, things that are growth pattern for him. This is going to be a lot of fun. I'm super excited, as you can tell. But first, I want to thank my sponsors. Of course, we want to thank Shot Darts. For being a sponsor, check out Shot Darts at shotdarts.com. They've got incredible looking barrels and other great materials that are available for the Shot Darts playing person or the darts player who loves Shot. However, you want to go with that one, check it out. They got dart boards, they got darts, of course. Uh, they got Ando on now. Um, his stuff's coming out soon. They've got great, great stuff over there. And of course, Magic Wear making these beautiful jerseys. Gotta love uh, what Jennifer Mounts is doing over there with Magic Wear. And I also want to thank Condor Darts, Condor Flights and Shafts. They've come on as a sponsor, so check those out. Those things are smoking hot. Love the Axe product. But that's not what you guys are here for. Let's bring Jason on, and we're going to chat it up and get virtual. Hey, hey what's man. going on, Jason? How's it going? Hey, good, man. How are you? I'm hanging in there, man. It's uh, bright and early for me and midday for you, I guess. Yeah, it's nine nine 30, so I'm central time. But yeah, I'm a couple hours ahead of you. So yeah, I had to take a few hours off from work this morning to join, but uh, really excited to come on and, and, and talk some darts with you. Yeah, it's going to be uh, exciting, and, and thank you for taking the time off. Um, I'm, I'm super excited because I've been watching what you've been doing. I was watching what Will was doing with Quarantine Darts when he was doing that. He, I mean, the bearded dart guy... It has grown into this massive thing. It's really awesome to see. But out of curiosity, because this is just everybody wants to know, like, how did you get into darts? Like, what was was it as a kid? Did your parents do it? What got you into the sport? You know, I, um, I was about 14 or 15, and I had an uncle, and, and my parents had split um, about that time. Um uh, and I had an uncle that I spent a lot of time with. It was my mom's uh, younger brother. And uh, he he worked for a vending company. So they they put dart boards into, you know, local clubs and local, you know, establishments. And um, he actually had the face out of a valley board, just like the board itself mounted on, you know, a piece of wood. And um, he had it in his house and, and they he would have people over and they would throw darts. And, you know, I decided one day I just kind of picked the darts up and I started playing and started throwing here and there. And you know, I, I felt like, you know, at a young age, I could compete with a lot of, with him and as well, a lot of his friends. And it was kind of a natural thing for me to to kind of play and 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 have, you know, somewhat of a higher ability, I felt like. Um, and then I kind of fell in love with it, man. I, I'm a competitive person by nature. And, uh, you know, I, I like to compete and I would play all of his friends and I'd want to beat them all. And, uh, you know, it was it was that's kind of how I got started into it. And. You know, eventually I kind of I hung a soft tip dartboard in my in my um, room as a, as when I was in high school and I, I would play. And then, uh, you know, probably about 18, once I once high school was kind of over, we started going to the um, Eagles Club here in my on my hometown. And I was they had a local tournament like Tuesday nights or so. And uh, we would play and I found myself winning, you know, a lot of times. And, and you know, that competitive nature just kind of kept kept building in me until. You know, I actually started traveling and, and competing on a higher level, much higher level later on. Uh, once I once I reached twenty one, very nice, cool. How was the uh, the traveling competitive scene for you at the time? Was it uh, was that fun? I mean, I mean, yeah. Uh, so my first son was born in ninety nine, so it kind of kind of happened at the same time. So it was kind of it was kind of difficult for me to to go and travel as much as I'd like to. I did still do it often. Um, you know, we, we traveled to the Indy Bullshooter Regional here in, in Indiana, um, traveled to Chicago for the for the Bullshooter Finals. Um, you know, I went to uh, Music City for the Steel Tip, went to um, Shoot for the Moon in Huntsville, Alabama, went to Blueberry Hill. So I was hitting some of the top uh, top tournaments, you know, local to me, somewhat local to me. And uh, yeah, so, you know, as far as results go, you know, I'd I, I done really well. And, um, you know, I think the First still tip tournament I played was Blueberry Hill. I think it was 2004, 2005, maybe. And, uh, I, you know, I was playing with a guy from uh, Jackson, Tennessee named Brandon McDaniel. He never played still tip. We went down there. We went to uh, St. Louis and ended up in the finals of the men's doubles. And we was playing uh, Steve Brown and uh, Dan Lobby. So it was kind of an experience. I missed uh, I missed three darts at double 20. And you know, I think Brandon had 59 uh, or no, 57. 
No, I can't remember. He had, he had he set me up on double twenty, but I, I prefer double sixteen, and I missed three clear at uh, double twenty to win it. And I think uh, Dan Lobby checked out like a one eleven or something on us behind me. So yeah, it's very memorable, and I'll, I'll never forget that. That's cool. Yeah, the tournament tournament play is is so much fun. I mean, just the attitudes and the the things that go on there. So that's cool. Um, so that was okay. That was back at that point in time, and and. W- getting to kind of hear darts has been something, but you've had the family at the same time, Um, Mm -hmm. you know, getting to be the bearded dark guy, at least this virtual aspect of it. What, what have you been up to during that? Has it just been league play? Did you take some time off? Um, Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah, I took some time off. So uh, I found myself probably about 2005. I had, you know, 2003, I had my second son and uh, you know, probably around 2005, 2006, um, I did step back, uh, probably 2005, and I, I, I kind of quit playing, kind of cold turkey, and uh, you know wanted to focus on the priorities in life, and you know make sure that the boys were taken care of, and you know, um, and then you know actually 2006 I started the job where I'm at now, I'm still at the same place, and that's cool. You know, so so just just kind of things were you know the priorities had changed, and uh, darts was no longer my number one priority. But 2008, you know, they announced that. North American uh, tournament in Connecticut. And then, uh, and then they had the PDC tournament there as well. And I, you know, I entered both of those and started practicing a little bit in 2008. And, uh, you know, to say that it was difficult, I never, I, I'm, I still don't think I'm back to where I was at before. It's, it's a difficult transition, man. And I, I felt then I had a lot of pressure on myself to compete at that high level. And, you know, I'd go to local tournaments here and people would be like, Hey, you know, well, I got, you know, I drew Jason and, you know, they expect that we're going to make a run. Well, you know, I wasn't the same person in the dart scene. I wasn't practicing like I should. I wasn't giving that commitment. So, you know, it was difficult, man. I, it was very humbling to me. And, uh, you know, I think I played, I played a, a local player from Boston in the first round of the PDC event and I lost. And then um, I played, I played the North American championship. I won my first match and I played Brad Weathington. And at the time, Brad was a phenomenal player and he went on to finish second in that event. So, you know, and then I, you know, I kept playing for a few years um, off and on and probably about 2014, uh, 2013, I kind of said, I'm done. You know, I don't want to play any longer. Um, I, you know, I met my wife um, and we have a, we've had a toddler since uh, he's four, he's four years old now. So, I was kind of done with darts, man. I was just, I was just over it, and I, but I always had a hobby, you know. I always had something to do, whether it was RC car racing. I got into that for a while, and I got into doing some other things here and there. And um, but darts was always my passion, man, and it was always in me. It's you know, it's just in, it's just in me. And uh, I watched darts when I didn't play. I would still watch Indiana State tournament when they streamed it. I'd still watch TOC. I'd still watch World Championships. I would still watch the darts, and I. It, you know, the, the itch was always there. And uh, so 2019, um, kind of fast forward to there, uh, like November, December, I made a decision like, hey, I'm going to, I saw the grand board, you can get online and play from your home, something that wasn't there before. And uh, I said, I'm going to buy me one, you know, I want to play, I have a basement and I could put it down here and I could throw on it. And from my comforts of my own home, and I could compete, you know, Yeah. and uh you know, unfortunately, uh, 2018, I lost my oldest son in, in a tragic accident. Um, he was him and his friend was uh, rear-ended by a drunk driver on uh, it was on uh, Labor Day weekend, and uh, you know, my whole mentality at that point had changed. You know, I was traveling to race RC cars, and I was leaving the family a lot, and and you know, it made it difficult because. At that time, I was at an RC car race when that happened. I was five hours away from my hometown. And, uh, you know, I get the call there saying, Hey, you know, there's been an accident. And, you know, at that, you know, when I got that call initially, we just loaded up and we left and I didn't really know what, what was going on. And, you know, I found out later that, you know, both boys had, you know, they didn't make it. And, you know, the traveling home was the worst thing I've ever done. I mean, I had a good friend with me. Thank goodness for him. Um, Addison Pierce, he was, uh, he drove me home and without him, I don't know if I'd have made it, man. And, uh, but you know, my whole mentality kind of changed at that point where I wanted to be home more. I wanted to be with my family and, uh, you know, I, this is something I can do from, from the comforts of my own home and be here with my family, you know, each and every night. So, um, and then, you know, I try to continue to race RC cars. It just wasn't the same, man. I it always brought back that, 
you know, those emotions. And that's where I was at. And I still love those guys. And, you know, I still talk to them all. But, uh, you know, it's it's difficult. Yeah. Yeah. Um, sorry to hear that. Um, did not know that. Um, I'm assuming that a lot of people watching uh, didn't know that about you. So I'm sorry to hear that. Um, Thanks. Yeah. I mean, yeah, I'll just leave it at that. Sorry. You know, sorry. Yeah. Yeah, no um, problem, man. So that's all you can say, man. You know, it, it, all, all it you really say. is. Yeah. It, it really is. Um, but getting into the back to darts, so you get the grand board, you put the board up, and it, it it does. It gives you the ability to play at home. You know, I was I was shooting archery, um, Olympic recurve, and that's the the, the point. You know, I I couldn't practice because I had the toddlers, had the kids. I wasn't able to to do a lot when I put my dart board up in my office and and got back to darts. Uh, something that I think everybody plays as a kid. Uh, I think everybody has a dartboard as a, as a kid and it goes away, which is a sad thing here in America. And you and I were mm -hmm. talking about that, like yeah. over in Europe, you're like, you come out with a set of darts. It's, it's yeah. really phenomenal. <laughs> yeah. Um, no it, you know, so you know, darts is such an inbred thing in the right way in over in uh, the UK or over in Europe, but here it's a bar sport. So mm -hmm. you get into darts and you get the grand board, which is awesome. We should play sometime. Uh, and I and, and there are a number of people out there that keep asking me to play. And, and here's the problem with it. And you probably understand this. When you have toddlers and you have kids and you're trying to play darts or put them to bed or try to do that, it's kind of tough. <laughs> um, where I live, I don't have a basement. I got a garage. Mm -hmm. My kids' bedrooms are like there's a wall that's attached to the garage in some way. So when I make noise in here, they know it. Um, but... I'm curious. So you get back into darts, you get the grand board. Were you playing much? I mean, how did the bearded dart guy come about? How did this virtual piece happen for you? So, you know, we started the grand board thing and a couple of buddies of mine, we would play and, uh, you know, we'd have, you know, I played all the time on grand board when it first started up. And, you know, then I noticed the CDC, you know, they're announcing, hey, we're coming to Chicago, we're doing this. And CDC kind of wasn't there whenever I was playing before. So I was kind of really interested in it. So I'm like, hey, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to hang my steel tip board back up. We're going to start practicing. I reached out to some of my old friends. We started practicing together. He would come over and, uh, you know, we got going. And then the pandemic hit, you know, and it, everybody was kind of just kind of, you know, it took everybody by surprise. Everybody, nobody really seen it coming. And, you know, in December when I bought the grand board, I also didn't realize that, hey, the camera came through the phone or the tablet you were using. So I went out and bought the webcam I'm using right now plus another webcam because I thought I needed both cameras to, to make it happen. Um, luckily, because, you know, four months later, there's a shortage and nobody can get one, you know. So um, I, I picked up both of these web cameras and, uh, you know, during that time, kind of when that transition happened to the pandemic, you know, I was still practicing. I was still playing. Um, my buddy, my buddy Jim said, hey, man, you, you should set up a stream and stream some local matches. And, uh, you know, like uh, stream me and you or stream me and you, one of my other friends, Eugene, whatever. And I kind of went to Twitch and I kind of set that up and we kind of started. I can't remember the date that we'd done that. But, uh, you know, it was basically just me playing or I'd get on grand or I'd get on steel tip and I'd play some on dark connect or, or whatever. And uh, that's kind of how it all started. It kind of evolved from there. You know, I kind of got away from the Twitch platform. I talked to uh, games green, James green, but he's, he goes by games green on uh, Facebook. He does a lot of grand board streaming and such. And he's like, Hey man, you need to come to, you need to come to Facebook. Like the platform's so much bigger, you know, the audience is bigger. So I did make that switch. I came to Facebook and I just kind of named it darts with Jason Watt. You know, I just kind of named my page that. And, uh, you know, the initially the, the goal was to stream, um, stream myself playing as well as, uh, my friends. And, uh, you know, they kind of started snowballing from there, man. We, we done a premier league where we had like Morgan Dotson. We had Jeff Springer jr. We had, uh, several players from Washington state and I was going to stream all those matches. And, uh, we did stream a lot of those, and then Bradley Claus was a big start as well. So, I mean, I would say Jim Jury and, and Bradley Claus kind of pushed me down this down this path. Um, you know, I met Brad online playing some events, and uh, he, he's like, hey, man, you, you have the ability to stream. I'm like, yeah, I do, and I didn't know anything about it. I, you know, thank, thank goodness to YouTube. Uh, 
you know, James Green, even, you know, Will Stewart helped me a little bit as well. Um, we kind of shot ideas back and forth, you know, and uh, it's, it's turned out to kind of be where it's at now. Yeah, it's cool. I mean, um, the, in a quick amount of time, the growth where virtual darts is gone. And there's, there's a couple guys out there doing it, a couple channels. Um, I, it, I think, and this is just based on my, my viewing of what's out there. You've kind of taken the, the bull by the horns, so to speak with this. Um, I would venture to say that the streaming that you're doing and a couple other people are doing, I, sorry, PDC. I think this outdoes what you guys are doing from, you know, the home tour situation and all that. I really, uh, I think the functionality that you guys have brought to the virtual game is is huge. Um, I, I know that I've in my head I've talked about maybe I should do it, but I, I just don't have the bandwidth to do all of this stuff um, with doing this show and trying to do reviews and then and, and that like and I talked to Will myself about it uh, at one point and and I just realized there's no way I can do that. Um, so I love what you guys are doing. I love what you're doing. I mean, it's great. You got like Danny Baggish playing consistently. There's just, you've had Jim Long. I mean, there's just, there's the list goes on and on and on of the guys that have been playing uh, on the virtual stream. And uh, I don't know if you realize this, but for players like myself and others, we're, we're you know, like, I'm in Southern California. Sorry, darts is not a big thing out here. Mm -hmm. um, I wish it was much bigger and it should be, but. I get to see players I would never get to see play thanks mm -hmm. to what you're doing. So that's a thank you from me. And I'm sure from the darts community uh, as to what you're putting forward. So you get into, you know, starting this and it's kind of going, but the growth pattern has been extreme. What, what's that been like? I mean, creating the bearded dart guy and what it has become. How's that process been? You know, I, like I said, I kind of had a generic name, Darts with Jason Watt, and then I changed it to kind of Darts with Jason to kind of get my last name out of there. And then, you know, I was thinking, I'm like, hey, you know, I want to, I want to give, I want to give somebody something. I want to give the people something that you know kind of shows my personality and that it gets me out there. And, and you know, because I love darts. I mean, I, I love the, I love getting excited when they hit the big shots. I, I love that, you know, and. Uh, I don't get that excited when I hit them, <laughs> you know, but when I see someone else do it, you know, it, it's, it's fantastic. But, you know, I, I was just sitting around one day and I'm like, man, what, what can I do to kind of, to kind of set myself apart from, from everyone else? You know, I mean, it, if you do the same thing as everybody else and, you know, you're, you're kind of, I don't know, I've just always been taught that I want to be different. I want to kind of set myself apart from everything else. And, I thought, man, you know, I, I have a pretty nice beard, <laughs> you know, I've never been this long. I mean, it's never been this long until I kind of started this. But, uh, you know, I was like, hey, bearded dark guy, it sounds pretty cool. You know, it sounds like it could get people's interest into the game. And ultimately, that's what I want to do, you know. And, you know, you, you mentioned the players. I mean, Matt Campbell was the second match that I streamed and uh, Matt and Bradley Claus and. You know, I kind of met Matt. We kind of tease each other back and forth, man. And, I, you know, I, I feel like I know Matt. We talk. Uh, Offline, you know, we'll, we'll FaceTime each other from time to time and we'll talk offline. We'll talk darts. We'll talk about life, man. And, you know, I feel like I personally know Matt and I can't wait to meet him. And uh, but, you know, that's what it's done. You know, Jim Long, you know, uh, Matt Campbell, uh, Danny Baggish, Danny Lobby. He's you know, he's been on a couple of times and, uh, you know, I love his family and his dad's probably one of my favorite dark players ever. I mean, I love I love his uh, his dad, Dan. And. You know, but a big, you know, it all goes back to the players. You know, number one, it's about them, right? It's about the game, and and that's what that's what we want to do. Is that number one, we want to promote the game of darts, but we also want to promote the player, because over here in North America, the player doesn't get the love and the support that they need. I mean, yeah, we have great sponsors that step in, and I've heard you talk about it several times. Like, yeah, we have A to Z, we have Dart Brokers, we have L Style, we have all these companies that support these players fantastic they do that but we need some outside uh we need some outside influences man and these players need that and you know ultimately i think to get them to that level um from the united kingdom that's what they need but anyway i'm kind of getting off topic there so the bearded dark guy kind of you kind of started there man i was like hey i'm just gonna name bearded dark guy and, and then it's kind of just evolved man i mean people people love it it's a kind of a persona for me it kind of gives me an escape um, from reality because I mean I deal with a lot of a lot of stuff about my son and you know and you know and it doesn't go to mention that my stepson was involved nine months prior to a, in a horrific accident that's changed his life forever I mean he's he's always going to have uh, 
some limitations and uh you know we've been through so much in the last three or four years and it, it just it's just a release for me i mean i get on there i have fun you know i interact with the players and it just for that certain amount of time and it takes me away from reality and uh you know that's what that's what i love about it and that's kind of how it's kind of just blown up yeah well and you can see that you you love it i mean you've you've taken steps to continue to grow um, you know, you've got the stickers, you've got the killer logo. I love your logo. I mean, that thing's awesome. Yeah. Um, you know, and if nobody's seen it, I'm going to, let me share this real quick. False just, advertisement. <laughs> so let me share this. This is, um, the Facebook page. So you don't have a regular website, uh, to the best of my knowledge. Um, not yet. No, no, we not didn't. yet. So this yeah. is the, the Facebook page. And I mean, and this is the logo. It's just awesome. I love this the little dartboard and the, and the hair and the, the beard. This is cool. Um, and you just see the matches. You, you got a grudge match coming on. Uh, Jake the Truth with the Gambler, you know, and, and just so much. You're pr helping promote CDC. Um, this is cool. The Ultimate Darts card with Larry, um, which I, I got to get my hands on one of those. Um, but this yeah, is really awesome. good cool stuff. You got jerseys that are available. So love it. Um, just love what you're doing over here with my mouse disappeared. Where'd it go? There it <laughs> love when that happens. Um, so really cool stuff. I love what you got going on. Um, just to dive in a little bit more into actual virtual darts, because I think, mm -hmm. um, and I'm curious your thoughts on this. I'm sure you've heard me say this. You know, I think there's a now a fracture within the darts community. There is going to be the the physical in person play that'll never go away. And it's always going to be a part of it. But I think this pandemic has created or the darts community has allowed or created this idea of virtual darts. And I don't think it's going to go anywhere. I think the tournaments, what you're doing, I don't think that's ever going to go any place for two reasons. One, people can play other people across the world this way. So pros in Australia can play pros in the U S the UK, mm -hmm. wherever, because of virtual darts. So I don't think it'll go for that reason. Plus, it allows people like maybe myself or someone that loves darts but doesn't want to go out that feels better playing in their basement or their garage to become a superstar. Oh, What's yeah. your thoughts? I'm sure you're like, yeah, that's sure, because that's what you do. But really, yeah. you're in the mix. Yeah. What's it, you know, do you see something bigger happening here? Is it on the horizon? You know, I, I think once everything opens back up, I think we may see just a small dip. I mean, I, I, I don't see how it couldn't be possible, right? Um, I definitely do feel like that it's always going to be there. Um, I feel like that it's always going to be, you know, I mean, we're both kind of in, you know, we both have our Facebook page. You have your show. I mean, you, you kind of realize that the the um, the marketing is kind of all um, kind of switched, right? It, it switched to more uh, social media-based uh, marketing and such. So I think that it's, it's a huge opportunity for not only, you know, the darting community, because we, we've all kind of embraced that. Um, we didn't have anything else to do, right? I mean, we, we could can set up a webcam, we could play darts. I definitely think it's not going to go anywhere. I definitely, I definitely think there's going to be tournaments, there's going to be um, online matches. I mean, we're going to find players like, like Jake Taylor. I, I talk about Jake a lot. I know people probably get tired of hearing me talk about Jake Taylor, but Jake Taylor, you know, I gave him the nickname, the truth. Um, and everybody's like, why'd you give him the nickname, the truth? I'm like, because if you, if you play Jake Taylor, he's going to tell you the truth about your game. If you beat Jake and you're, you're a phenomenal player. And then we've had people beating Jim Long's beating, which we know Jim's an exceptional player. Danny Baggish is beating Bruce Robbins is beating. Um, and you know, there's several others that, that maybe, maybe not on my stream that has, off, has also beat him, but you know, when this started, nobody knew Jake besides the people in um, his province and uh, his area. And, uh, you know, Juice Ryan, Justin Juice Ryan, who runs some phenomenal tournaments out of Canada, um, who I've become friends with. And, and uh, you know, we kind of work on some things together. He told me, he said, you need to get Juice, you need to get Jake Taylor on your stream. And I'm like, Man, you know, he's played in a couple of tournaments that I ran. I was running some tournaments in at-home tourney darters. It's a Facebook group. And uh, Jake had come in and won a couple of those and uh, actually hit a nine darter against Kevin Luke, and it wasn't streamed, unfortunately. So, um, you know, I at that point, I'm like, I reached out to Jake. I'm like, hey, you know, will you come on? He's like, sure. And uh, he came on. And just ever since then, man, I mean, his, you know, he's picked up a couple sponsors, and he's, uh, you know, he's just – 
I, I think he's planning to travel. I mean, I think he, it's taking him to that to that point where he's going to attempt to travel around. And then you have people out there saying, well, he doesn't travel outside. He doesn't play this. I mean, he's played Kylie Edmonds. He's played Kerry Way. He's played uh, all the top players that I could – Matt Campbell, Danny Baggish. I mean, everybody that I could throw at him, he's taking them on. Kiefer Durham. I mean, it, the list just keeps going on and on. He's a fantastic player. I don't care if he travels outside of his hometown or not. Give the man some respect. He is a great player regardless of that. So, yeah, and you can you can be a big fish in a small pond, which, you know, at this point in time, that's kind of where this is is at. And and there's nothing wrong with that. I'd rather be the big fish in a small pond than a big fish in a big pond with all the other big fish. So, yeah. you know, it's it's harder to rise to the top. Um so that's cool. And it's cool that you found someone. And, and I want to bring this aspect into this real quick. And if you're watching this and you're liking it, please hit the like button, smash the, the heart and all that other stuff that social media push. Um, <laughs> but go. I, I want to talk about <clears throat> the sponsors because that's a big piece of this. Like I've got my sponsors, of course, shot darts and magic wear and condor who's, who's come on. You've got some sponsors and I want to make sure you get a shout out to them, but this whole virtual thing, and like Will and I were talking a little bit about this, is you know the push for, to help the sponsors because like the sponsors lost all of their ability to mm -hmm. to use the players as a marketing piece uh, at tournaments because it went away. Um, first off, why don't you talk about some of your sponsors um, and then talk about maybe how you're helping players with the sponsorship piece? Yeah, so I mean, first and foremost, uh, DartBrokers.com and. Uh, they came on board as well as us. Now we have SmurfDarts.ca. You know, we have a lot of Canadian contingent that come in, man. We have a lot of Canadian players. And, you know, we reach out, I reached out to Randy Moffitt and, and uh, kind of asked him, hey, would you be interested in something, you know, because I understand shipping costs from dart brokers may not be the best, you know. So um, SmurfDarts.ca, uh, they came along. And uh, L-Style, which is uh, fantastic. It's uh, been fantastic to work with them and, um, you know, they, they have all the best products that, uh, I mean, I personally use Elston and always have, so it's easy for me to, to promote their product. And, uh, you know, we have Galaxy Barrel Design, Galaxy Apparel Design, who designed my jerseys. And um, and then we have 180 who came on. And, uh, you know, they kind of came on to, uh, here recently. And, you know, I know I saw your Illumina Light review, and it's a, I use it. It's on my board back there now. I got two of them it. now. Yeah, they're fantastic. So they are. Yeah, man, a big shout out to them. I mean, we kind of we kind of started off with some sponsors, you know, kind of some small stuff. I reached out to uh, Hard Luck Darts and uh, Mark Rowe, kind of when I was still darts with Jason, and uh, you know, we didn't have anything like official. And and you know, I, I you know, I I'm still friends with Mark. I love Mark. I love what he does. Him and uh, Nils Nelson at Metro Dart Club, they kind of work hand in hand. And Jeff Springer sponsored by them, and um. And we kind of worked with David Garfinkel from Dirty Jersey for, you know, for a while there. He came on and sponsored some tournaments and such that I put on. So, you know, I definitely don't want to leave those guys out because I owe them a thanks as well. And I'm still, like I said, I'm still friends with them and uh, there's no hard feelings between us. But, uh, you know, I had an opportunity to kind of to kind of grow. Um, and, and I felt like that, you know, we, that is something that I should have done. I mean, to, to get L style to come on to my stream is, is uh, you know, it's an honor and, you uh, you know, when I had that opportunity, I just I just couldn't pass it up. So anyway, just just kind of give them a shout out as well, because, uh, you know, I, I appreciate what they've done and, and what they continue to do for other players and, and for the game. Yeah, good. I mean, those are all good. Um, I mean, good brands. And, and that's the I guess the beauty of, of things is there's there's enough out there. The pie's big enough that all of us can get a little something here or, or you know, we all love a specific product. Mm -hmm. You know, and this is a platform like for me, uh, and, and everybody knows this. I've loved the shop brand for years now. I've loved the growth of the brand, um, the product that they produce, and and I'll never stop talking about it. Mm -hmm. And you know, I'm a huge shot fan. I like, you know, like I just reviewed these things, and I, it's a great barrel. There's nothing wrong with what Target's putting out or anything. I just have, I'm a fandom of of shot and Peter. And, and that product over there. So that's cool. I'm glad that, you know, there, there's, there needs to be this. This needs to be there yeah. to help the brands and, and for people to know. What do you do on the live streams? Because each of your players is going to have a different, you know, you know, maybe a manufacturer that's doing something, a jersey that's doing mm -hmm. something for them. Um, 
you know, are you helping the brands when it comes to, and I know you are, but I'm just curious about that, that conversation with players, how that works out. Yeah. So, you know, usually typically we would start off the match by letting the players give a shout out to their sponsors. I mean, that's kind of the agreement that I have with all the sponsors on my page is if it's, if it's a direct uh, uh, competitor, it's okay because the players are first, right? I mean, who supports the player is going to come first. I mean, it's not going to be that, that kind of, uh, competitiveness between, you know, say L style and Cosmo, you know, I don't want that. If they're a Cosmo player, I want them to be able to shout out Cosmo. I mean, that's, that's part of it. And, uh, most definitely want to give those players that opportunity. And I give every one of them an opportunity. Hey, you know, thank whoever's sponsoring you. Thank whoever supports you um, each and every stream. So, you know, I want that. I want them to give them a shout out. I want them to, uh, you know, I, I had one, uh, one player request uh, on, came on. He said, Hey, do you care to put the quantum darts logo up? No. And, you know, I'll put it up on the stream when you play, like I'll put it on your side of the board or whatever. It was Mr. It was Scott Marsh from the from the UK who was sponsored by Quantum and, uh, you know, who actually just played last week in the uh, the European tournament and, and had an opportunity to, to get past Jason Lowe for the, to get to the second round. So he played in a tournament that I put on and, you know, he requested that. And if any other players request that, I mean, I most of, unless I have 10 different logos, I need to go in there, of course, or maybe not. But, uh, you know, a logo or two, if they want me to throw it up there, I will. But, you know, I mean, for example, we have Sean Brenneman in our Premier League who's sponsored by Nine Dart Out and Unstoppable Darts. And, hey, give him a shout out, man, because, uh, you know, I want everybody out there to know that, that that's your sponsors. And if somebody wants to support them because of you, then most definitely uh, let them do it. Yeah, I think it's it's important. And, you know, and I you set your show up kind of the way I do. It's like, hey, you know, these are my – sponsors and I'm going to talk about my sponsors, but if I'm bringing someone on that, that maybe works for another brand or something, they've got to be able to talk about that. And I think all the brands out there, all the manufacturers understand that they're not the only one out there. Um, yeah. You know, as long as I'm not spending my entire time talking about something else, you know, yeah. you know, it's, you work those things out. Um, yeah. But that's cool. And I think it's a great opportunity for players to maintain and like you've mentioned, there are players that have picked up sponsors because of the virtual darts. Yeah. Um, if say I was new to darts and I, you know, I found it this pandemic and I'm like, oh, I'm totally into darts. I'm finding that I'm playing well. How does someone go about getting into the virtual darts world? Um, and that's a twofold question. One, I want to talk a little bit about what do people use? You know, like, what are you using? Are there particular programs? I mean, what's a suggestion for someone that's doing starting out? And then if I was a player and wanted to become the next virtual superstar, what's your suggestion on a path? Yeah. So, you know, typically what I use for my stream is just Streamlabs OBS and I use uh, Skype. We, we dial in with Skype and then we have the dark connect watch code. So we use uh we use those three programs to, to basically run everything. And, uh, you know, as far as um, – and then the, what the second part of the question was, if you're new, how do you get involved? And, you know, the biggest thing is, you know, there's a there's a site out there that, like I mentioned earlier, At Home Tourney Darters is a group that, that I'm a part of. I used to run tournaments in there whenever I was, was working from home more than I am now. Um, and they, they run a tournament every Friday night, so there's always that – that you have that opportunity to go play a, a tournament. I just signed up for a uh, Windy City online uh, dart league. You know, you have Metro Dart Club who does online uh, leagues and such, and they're all dart connect based, you know. So first and foremost, you're definitely going to have to have a dart connect account, especially if you're in the United States. Uh, you know, I think overseas they kind of use the NACA format, which I've never, I'm not familiar with it. I'm not, I've never used it. Um, never streamed a match with it. I've had people ask me and I, you know, it's just something that I, I probably will do eventually, but right now I'm just, I'm more comfortable with, uh, with the dark connect. Um, you know, definitely got to have a webcam. Um, either, either your, your phone can work as one or your, uh, you have to actually have a webcam and then you're going to have something for your scoring, you know, to keep your scoring on. So that's kind of how to get started with, uh, maybe the virtual world. What you'll need is a, a phone, a tablet and, uh, and, you know, Dark Connect, and that's basically it. You'll use Messenger or you'll use Skype, some kind of messaging service as the as the camera. Um, you know, we've used Discord. 
we've used uh, Skype, we've used uh, Facebook Messenger. I mean, there's so many different things out there that you can use. I heard people using Teams, Zoom. I mean, there's all kinds of, of stuff going on. As far as getting recognized and getting sponsors, I mean, I, I just feel like, you know, I put a lot of players on that uh, it doesn't matter what their average is. I mean, I want players to come on. I want, I want my supporters to come on and play. I don't care if they average 35, 40. Um, or they average 90. It doesn't matter. I want them guys, if they feel comfortable coming on live stream, you know, just like Saturday, you know, we have the two, two to six Eastern um, supporter stream. Four hours we're going to be streaming. We're going to have King of the Hill. Whoever keeps the board keeps it. They keep winning. We'll bring somebody else in to challenge them. It doesn't matter what your average is. Just come in and have fun and play. And, you know, I have so many messages from people. Hey, how do I get on? How do I play? How do I play? And I try to get every single one of them on the stream. And, uh, you know, it's difficult. I mean, it's, it's difficult to get everybody on just because it's kind of it's kind of growing so quickly and everybody wants to play. But I do my best to, to get them all on at some point and uh, let them have their fun, man. And just, you know, that's what it's about. Yeah, that's cool. Um, I, one thing I do want to bring up, because I saw this yesterday and you're talking about different ways that you can, you know, I've I've used Zoom. Uh, that's what we use for league. But I want to point out one thing. There is a program out there called Webcam Darts, uh, and I just want to push this because they they had a there was a big thing out yesterday in regards to it. Um, basically, what they've said is we are for practice only. Webcam Darts is just for practice. You, of course, you can play anybody in the world with that that particular mm -hmm. platform, but you are not to stream for money in any way, shape, or form. So if, just so that anybody out there that's doing this. If you go to webcam darts, it's a great platform to play other people, players, but don't do any of that other stuff. They're kicking people off left and right, oh, really? right now. Oh, wow. Yeah. I, I am a member on there. I think, uh, I, I did start playing there for, I haven't been on there for months now, but, uh, kind of when everything was shut down, I did get on there and play a few matches and it, it's a, it's a great platform to be on for sure. Yeah. It's, it's a functional platform, but practice only is what they're saying. Yeah. I'm curious with Dark Connect having the new uh, ability to to you know live stream as far as with a camera because they've added that piece and of course they're they're working through it. There's some bugs with it. Do you see somewhere down the future here where we're going to go to a two camera system where there's a camera on the board and a camera on the player? You know, I I've thought about uh, trying that, and uh, you know, I have the ability to do that, um, but. You know, I think that they've done it over in like the modus icons of darts and they've done it over there with the uh, I don't know if the RDL done it. I don't believe so. But, you know, I I think if they do that, I think it's going to be on more on a limited basis because not everybody's going to have that capability. I mean, kind of right now, you know, I, I could personally do it, but I don't know how many people that I have come on that can actually set up a dual camera setup and, and make it happen. Um, I mean, it, it to be fair. And to if you're playing for money, you're playing for a lot of money and you're playing for tur a tournament, whatever. I mean, from that angle, if you don't know the player, um, most definitely feel like that you probably need that, um, especially if it's a high stakes kind of kind of thing. Um, you know, I, I'm kind of uh, I'm kind of the person that that's going to trust the people. I'm going to trust you until you give me some reason not to. And, uh, you know, kind of like the premier league we're running now we're paying out three thousand dollars you know and uh, it's you can only see the board but you know all eight of those players are top-notch sponsored players that the integrity that they have they're not willing to put that on the line to cheat in my opinion um now if you have some other players that's maybe not sponsored or not known and, you, and they're in a tournament and they're you're doing this i mean the, the potential is there right i mean Use Jake for an example. If you don't know Jake and he's on there averaging 100 on you, I mean, people are like, who is this guy? Like, where would he come from? Is he, he has to be cheating, right? I mean, nobody knows him. And, yeah. uh, you know, I mean, it, that, that, that's there. But, I mean, I think I think overall I think you will see it at some point. I mean, I think it's going to have to happen to make it uh, maybe the high class that, uh, you know, especially for high stakes. Yeah. I, I can see – well, it's a couple things with that. One, uh, I keep thinking I'm going to try and pull in someone that plays better than me to play my league, and I'll just withdraw <laughs> the darts and they can throw them. But I, I think everybody <laughs> in my league would be like, yeah. wait a second. You just jumped up. Like, that's yeah, 20 points. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> How did that yeah. happen? 
So that's I, funny. you know, I you know, that's the only way I see a cheatability because you don't want to stand closer to the board, and everybody that plays darts will tell you you don't want to stand closer to the board. Um, you know, you want to stand the right distance because it'll screw your game up when you have to play live. So mm -hmm. that's never been a concern for me on the cheating side. But I think what could happen, this is just my brainchild coming out here, is you're going to see leagues or these tournaments where maybe like the CDC, who's got a certain number of players, they're going to provide them to cameras. They're going to provide them what's needed. And that's almost mm -hmm. what you need to do, especially when you get into that higher dollar amount. And, mm -hmm. and, and you know, it, it's tough, but you almost have to provide the players the pieces that they need to be able to do this and take it to a level of where you're giving twenty thousand dollars you're giving yeah. you know that kind of money out um but i think it's there i think it's possible the programming's but do, there but do you think i mean still still my thinking on that is you know what i've seen with the modus it doesn't show them where they're throwing from i mean you could still be however close to the board right you don't yeah. see the throw line you don't see the floor yeah. Now, I don't believe that anybody would intentionally do that. I mean, I, I like I said, I don't I don't think that people would do that intentionally. If you love the game and you love to play, you you know, play it the right way. I mean, that's my that's my standing on it. And, uh, you know, I, I don't think that it didn't matter if I was playing Jim Long for a thousand dollars. I wouldn't I would no way try to cheat to, to beat him. I mean, it that's just my mentality on it, because. It's not worth it. And also, I love the game of darts and I'm not going to, you know, I'm not going to take away the integrity of, of the sport by 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 doing that. So, no, I mean, it has it, happened. Right. I mean, we've, we've seen, yeah, we've yeah, seen I was it, gonna say, it. It happened in, in, in the PDC stuff. So yeah. um, it does happen. I can I mean, I don't think we need to see their foot necessarily other than for foot faults. But really, when was the last time you had a foot fault? I mean, it just yeah. it, that happens in league play. But when you're talking about professionals, but it would be cool to have the camera on them and the camera at the board and, and have that aspect to it. And trust me, there will be a, a Millie Vanilli out there that tries to cheat the game. Oh, it's, there's no doubt. It's going to happen. But you get caught. Eventually, you get caught. Um I had a good question and it just oh, sorry. right on up, man. My age is showing. Uh, that's all right. Um, so uh, what's it like doing this at home with the family? I mean, you mentioned that you got, you know, a toddler and you got other family members there. Um, I know for me, the struggles that go with, with having the kids around. Um, how do you do as much as you're doing with all of that, you know, going on around you? You know, I, I, you know, I definitely, if you ask my wife, I definitely uh, sacrifice a lot, uh, a lot of my time, um, especially with uh, with her, you know, more so than anyone else. Uh, you know, my, my four year old son loves darts. He'll come down here and he does the 180 calls. So, I mean, he's he's uh, he's a superstar of the show man. he does the uh, you know, his 180 calls phenomenal. And it's I actually recorded it. Um, I was gonna say, is it recorded or is he live it, calling? No, no, it's recorded now because he's not always down here. Sometimes he says he's too tired to do it. And but you know, it, that kind of got started because I was streaming a match and my friends were in there from my local area and they're like, Hey, Jason, call the 180, you know. So I'm like, yeah, I'm not gonna do that, <laughs> you know. I like I'm I'm not gonna I'm not gonna do that. It's embarrassing. No Russ no, Ray in you, huh? Yeah, so I, I kind of, you know, I kind of took it. I was like, all right, the next one to hit, I'll call it. So I started calling them. You know, every time somebody hit a 180, I would scream them out. And, uh, you know, there was times it was 10 o'clock at night. I'd wake my wife up and everybody in the house. And, uh, you know, it kind of it kind of caught it kind of caught on. Everybody wanted to hear it. You know, everybody, hey, he calls he calls the 180s. And, he, you know, put the energy into it. I would scream it, you know, I'd probably blow people's ears out. And, uh Jack's kind of caught on to that, man. And, and he kind of uh, started screaming at himself, like down in the basement. And then people would be like, man, we love that 180 call. We love his 180. Where's Jack's? Let, let's Jack's call it. So I finally recorded it. I finally have it on there. I have a shortcut. I hit the button. And every time a 180's hit, he calls it. So the fans, love, I mean, the, the, the supporters, the, the bearded nation, man, they love it. And, uh, and, you know, I have people saying, hey, I want that as ringtone. I want this. I want that. I was that. about to say that. And, yeah, uh, yeah so it, it's kind of – they, they kind of love him, man. They love they love what he does. He actually come on the stream with me. Um, actually, if you go back to uh, Sean Brenneman and Kylie Edmonds last week on my page, 
uh, the Premier League. About 18 minutes in, Sean takes out a 110, and I say, uh, you know, I, I call it out, and I say, you know, and what do we say, Jax? And he's sitting on my lap, and he says, bingo, baby, <laughs> like that. So he listens to me, man, and he gets into it. He loves it, and, uh, you know, the, the Bearded Nation loves him, man. So it's a, it's a lot of fun. But, yeah, Jax really gets into it. My wife, you know, there's times where, you know, some, some of the scheduling stuff doesn't work out. I, I tend to only try to stream – Tuesday, Thursday, Sunday, but, uh, you know, like this week we have, you know, a couple Fridays I've done it uh, because of scheduling with the, with the bounty players. Um, you know, Saturday, I have this event coming up Saturday, you know, and it, it kind of rolls in now, you know, kind of rolls over a little bit, but I definitely try to, uh, I definitely try to, to stay away from the CDC as much as possible. And even with Will and the USA dart stuff, I mean, we've kind of coordinated a couple matches to kind of, moving around. We did have one overlapping so far that uh, we really couldn't do anything about, but uh, you know, it is what it is. We'll work together as much as we can to kind of get everybody's group on that match, you know, and, and I think that's the main thing is that, you know, we, we all want all the eyes on the darts and no matter where it's at, it's, that's the ultimate goal. Well, that's cool that you guys are working together so that we're not, you know, overlapping as far as, because you know you'll have some great players on and then they'll have you know it's like where do you go i luckily have multiple monitors and i'll have you know i can, <laughs> yeah. I can stream multiple things um so that's cool that you guys are at least working together and again that's the beauty of the sport is the the understanding that hey we want to provide a program that everybody that loves the sport can see and watch and so why fight for the for the air time so to speak you know it's like yeah, why not yeah for sure and then we did have some competitive stuff going on with quarantine darts and you know with darts with jason back in the, you know will and i just talked about that and we've cleared the air and i you know there's no there's no nothing between us i mean i i support him i support usa darts i watch i watch uh cdc i mean i, I love it man i'm a fan of darts and i'm not gonna you know let something so I think it's petty and, you know, to get between us. And, you know, I can't wait to meet him in person. Uh, you know, I plan to play in the CDC event. So I'm not I'm not done playing. I, I love darts and, I, you know, I, I'm going to play. I'm a player. And that's the way I look at things. You know, I think that's the reason why. Um, one reason why that, uh, that I really want to drive the players out there is because I'm a player myself. And I know back when I was playing and, um, and, and traveling more, um, that – this kind of coverage for darts wasn't there. And, uh, you know, this kind of people getting on and seeing, you know, back in those days, I mean, I love for people to watch me play, you know, so, and I'd love to be able to, to match or to get online and play Dan, you know, when I was traveling to Dan uh, lobby up in Terre Haute, which are about an hour and 20 minutes from me, I travel up there on Sunday afternoon and we would practice for hours, you know? Um, so that, that kind of stuff's kind of evolved, you know, and, uh, but anyway, yeah, most definitely, man. It's all about just just kind of loving the game and, and and pushing the game out there, especially for North America, because we kind of touched on that before we got started here. But I, I know that uh, you know we need some growth here. <laughs> That's true. It's true. It's not. It's still considered a bar sport when you talk to a lot of people that haven't started playing. But once people get into darts, they realize, wait a second. There's something here. And I think we've seen a lot of growth this year. As much as I hate the pandemic situation, it's been good for darts in the retrospect that I see a lot more dart boards when I drive down the street or I'm walking down the street in people's garages that weren't there before. So, mm -hmm. uh, you know, it's definitely got some growth. What's on the horizon for the bearded dart guy? Is there anything coming up or, you know, or like any tournaments or something you want to talk about? But, you know, what, yeah, what do we do? Seeing? So we're coming to an end of the Premier League. We actually have uh, we have our first night tonight, and then Sunday night will be the second night. Unfortunately, due to the due to the standings, the second night will not be advertised. It will not be aired um, because we have uh, we basically have four players fighting out for the last spot. Um, Jim Long is in the fight. He will go live tonight and play, but uh, you know he needs he needs a lot of help to get that to get that position. He needs. Uh, Kylie Edmonds to win and Danny Delfino to win. Um, but we have uh, Adam Stella taking on Kylie Edmonds and Larry Butler taking on Danny Delfino. And one of those are – Danny Delfino is the only one that's mathematically eliminated. Those other three players are still in the hunt for the last spot. So 
to give no to, to not give someone an advantage, we're going to kind of play it offline, uh, maybe record it and then maybe put it on you know at a later time, maybe a tape delay. Um, just because I don't want anyone knowing the results of those matches, you know, because we're we're basically taking points and then we're taking leg differential. So, um, you know, but for the horizon, for what's coming up, man, it's, you know, we have, we're going to have that playoff coming up, um, which is going to be big. We're going to have, you know, Kevin Luke, Bruce Robbins, and Sean Brenneman kind of locked yourself into the top four already. We're, we still have the one spot to, to fight for. We're going to have our top 10 tournament to determine, you know, the overall champion of the top 10 list that I had going on. Uh, that's going to be coming up as well. And then, you know, we have some other things coming up. We have uh, a bearded dark guy, um, Galaxy Barrel Design sponsored player that we're going to we're going to crown somebody to uh, to get their own their own barrel. So um, they kind of be like a, a sponsorship by myself and then in, in, in you know, a cahoots with uh, Galaxy Barrel Design. So if, if you've ever wanted your own barrel, it's probably going to be like a 10 10 week series where they play like a tournament and they ba- get points based off of finishes and such, but still ironing out the details on that, but that's going to be something that's going to be real exciting. I think because you know, there's a lot of people that, uh, that, that probably want their own dart barrel and that, you know, they want to, uh, you know, have that sponsorship and have that help. And there's people out there that deserve it, you know? Yeah. So, but on the horizon for me, I mean, we're, I'm working with uh, I'm working with Galaxy Barrel Design as well to design my own barrel, kind of like you are with Shot, right? I mean, I think you talked about that, and I, I saw it and uh, looked pretty good. Yeah, it's awesome, and uh, you know, I'm working with them to to design my barrel, and uh, you know, I'm going through some stuff now to try to get that to get that out there. But uh, you know, we have the L style flights coming out with the bearded dark guy on them, and it's they look fantastic, but. I mean, we're going to continue doing what we're doing. We may have some tournaments and stuff come up. I know that, uh, you know, we our first tournament we raised almost – we had eight four $400 in entry fees, and we paid out about $1,000, so we had $600 in sponsorship money. Um, our second one, we had uh, over $1,000 added, I think, or $1,500 added by sponsors. So, you know, I think that, that this online stuff, the virtual stuff, kind of gives that ability to, to kind of get, get those funds up, you know. I mean – get that uh, sponsorship money up. Whereas maybe an online or a live event, you have so much overhead costs, right? You have the venue, you have this, that, I mean, all this stuff, the setup, the, the teardown. I mean, there's so much overhead there. Whereas in the virtual side, you don't really have that overhead. The players are responsible for their cameras. They're responsible for their, you know, their internet. They're responsible for all that. All you're basically responsible for is just running the event and promoting, you know, promoting it and then promoting the sponsors. So, you know, some big things coming up. Most definitely we're, we're going to probably roll into a season two of the Premier League, you know, as soon as the first one's done. So, um, cool. yeah, it's going to be it's going to be a good time. Very nice. Very nice. Yeah. Having a barrel like I've I've had mine like I've, I've they're sitting in a box behind me and I've had them for a month or so. I'm waiting on my boxes to show up. There's. I don't think anybody understands. There's so many pieces you have to put together to make it. And then I got to market it. But um, I do have uh, uh, a barrel that, and I've been playing with it for a while. Love it. Um, of course, I got mine from Shot. So I'm congratulations on that. That's going to be awesome. Yeah, um, I think we're going to see more of it. I think we're going to see more of these small batches of these custom barrels hitting the market. So I think it's going to be cool. Yeah. I mean, congrats on the Condor thing too. That's awesome. Oh. I know that you, I know that you shot, you shoot them and that you were talking about it on maybe on the last episode or the episode before, but uh, you know, it's awesome that, uh, that they came on board and uh, yeah, it's fantastic. Yeah, I know it's, it, it's really cool. Um, and I just love the, the fact that, you know, the, the darts community will, you know, as far as manufacturers will, will rally around people. Um, so if you're out there and you're trying to figure out how to do this stuff, make sure you're doing the social media bit. You got to make sure that you're talking about stuff and talk about the brands you like. Um, this is something I'd love to you know, like bring you back on and maybe you know, like maybe do a round robin with Jen Mounts and you and a couple other people and talk about sponsorship because that's always a question I get a couple times a week. Like, how do I get a sponsor? Whether it's yeah. a YouTuber or a player, and it's you've got a you've got, like I talked about shot for probably over a year before they were like, Hey, like, can we send you some stuff to review? I was like, yeah, I was buying their product. So, yeah. you know, it takes time and, and, and eventually it gets seen. I have two questions for you before we wrap up. Cause we're getting close here. Yep. One. And I just, I haven't seen this and maybe I missed it. Have we seen a nine darter on a virtual match yet? 
Not on mine. Uh, I don't know. I don't think Will's had one on his either. Um, but I do know that uh, there have been a couple that have been streamed that I've seen uh, maybe from overseas. Uh, I know that maybe the, the dark stream live, I don't know if you caught any of him. Um, I've ben seen Hunter, a little bit, yeah. Yeah, um, he, I think they had one on there, I believe. Um, but not we. the closest we came on the Bearded Dark Guy stream is seven. Seven perfect. And I think it was Bruce Robbins. He went 180, 180, triple 20, missed a triple 19. Um, so I, I know it's coming. I, I, I you know, I, Danny Baggish has come so close a couple times, but uh, yeah, I definitely know it's coming soon. So that's, that's something for those that out there that are playing the streams to shoot for, um, you know, become the first person on the bearded dart guy to hit that, that, illustrious nine darter so you know that that could be some history in the making right there so that's cool i think we're so, talking yeah, about a nine darter. We're ta- i think we're talking about a nine darter pod as well you know i mean you know right now that the, my facebook page allows me to get supporters and allows me to get stars and all that money is getting put back into the stream somehow whether i got to upgrade a computer i mean i have to I, my, my laptop won't hold what i really want to do with it uh, and uh you know i had to do that and it, you know it also goes into our bounty matches, you know, Danny, Danny Baggish is holding our men's bounty right now, which is up to $110. The first one, you know, we added 150 to it to start, which Danny took it down and, you know, we paid him that money. Um, we have the ladies bounty, which Paula Murphy holds now. So, I mean, we, we do a lot of stuff like that to kind of get players on to play for a little something. It's not the biggest prize in the world, but it's also not just an exhibition match. You know, they want to come on and maybe compete and they didn't have that. I mean, some people, need that right i don't personally i'll play darts and just to to compete with you um i want to beat you right i don't care if we're playing for a dime or we're playing for uh a hundred dollars i still just want to win um but some players are there you know they need a little bit of motivation and that's if they feel like they're not playing for anything you don't get their best game and uh so anyway we got got that stuff going on as well so it's uh it's busy man one thing I want to just put out for those that are that are watching, because I don't know that if, if everybody is that like for me, I don't do this for money. Any money I make, anything I sell on my website goes to this stuff. Like I've bought new cameras. I bought new lenses. I bought a new computer this year where I built one. Um, all the money just goes back into trying to produce more, better uh, product that we put out there. And I, and, and I would say if you're not supporting the, the bearded dark guy in some way, whether it's buying some stickers or doing this, and I'll be honest, I'm horrible about marketing myself and, and putting product out there that people can purchase. Um, I'm, I'm really bad at it. Cause I've, I, I just, I'm bad at it. I was just sad. Cause I was a marketing well, ant major, but you're probably not the, bad at it. You probably feel like I do, man. Sometimes you feel guilty about it. Right. I mean, I, I do personally. Yeah. I mean, I, I feel guilty about it. I'm like, man, you know, but, in retrospect to that, I mean, I've had so many people say, hey, you know, you need something for your time. Like, you know, you're spending your time, you're spending, you know, whatever. And, you know, it's it's difficult, though, because you don't you don't want to feel like that you're pushing it on people like, hey, I need you know, I don't necessarily need it. And I don't never ask for, you know, a donation or ask. For, but I will definitely try to now I will definitely say, hey, you know, support by buying a jersey or support by buying stickers or support by buying a hat like you know like you're wearing now you sell hats and mugs and I do a lot of stuff so you know initially i felt guilty about that i'm not gonna lie i'm not, I'm not gonna lie in the, in, the, in the slightest yeah yeah and, and i guess i i sit in that realm where i'm like yeah you know i'd rather just give it out because it gets the name out there and i'd rather people have something but at the same time you do need the support and so what i'm saying is guys that are out there if you're not watching the bearded dark guy which is support believe it or not that helps support but buy a sticker buy a little something the money's the money doesn't go in our pockets whether you believe it or not i mean it goes to to purchase uh better equipment or to pay for monthly subscriptions that we pay for for you know web-based programs and different things like that. So I do want to give that shout out there as, as we end this, but real quick as we land the plane, I just want to give you another opportunity to, uh, you know, mention your sponsors and tell people where they can find you. Yeah. So, I mean, first and foremost, before I mention the sponsors, man, I, I, I got to mention all the nation, man, the bearded nation, because uh, without them, it, it definitely wouldn't, uh, wouldn't be what it is now. And, uh, you know, and that includes all the players, that includes all the uh, all the people that come into the chat. That includes the people that maybe don't catch us live, 
that just kind of comes on, you know, they come on and check out a video here and there. All you guys, all the followers, man, it, you know, it means a lot to me personally. It means a lot to these players to have you guys in there chatting it up and, and chatting it with me as well. So much love to you guys, um, each and every one of you, whether, you know, and that goes without saying, you know, the youth matches I love, man. I love streaming the youth. I love hearing the excitement in their voice when they hit that big double. It's awesome. So, I mean, it goes from the youth player to the professional player and everybody in between, man. It's it's awesome. But uh, thank you to each and every one of you. Um, you know, and then, and then lastly, you know, definitely thank thank you to our sponsors, dartbrokers.com, uh, smurfdarts.ca, L-Style, uh, Galaxy Barrel Design, Galaxy Apparel Design, and 180. Cool. And, and I'd love to talk to you about, you know, having Coffee and Darts sponsor. So we'll have to do that offline, but uh, I'd love to come on and, and help out in any way I can. Hey, everybody, thank you so much for watching. Uh, Jason, thank you so much for being hey. on this show. I could talk to you for another hour or two because yeah. I got a ton of more questions in my head and written down just to talk about darts. And you know, we didn't even get into the youth stuff. We didn't get into the yeah. ladies. So we're going to have to bring you back on maybe, yeah. you know, like a Christmas edition or something. And and, and talk more about what's coming on and what's yeah. coming on. They got to be Santa Claus with this beard, right? Yeah, beard out. So I trimmed it <laughs> out. And I, I, I went ahead and trimmed it um, for work purposes, but, you know, sometimes you got to do that. But well, I have the mask covering it up now, so. You do, you, we'll put, like, jewel you know, Christmas lights. We'll put Christmas lights. <laughs> there you go. Good deal, yeah, yeah. We'll make it into the, the – that's what you can do with your logo for, for Christmas is put some, oh. some green and red in it. So. Yeah, we'll do that. We'll do that. But um, yeah, no, it's been a pleasure having you on. I'm, I'm was really excited to to have you here because I love what you're doing, and I think we need to talk more about it. We need to get, I, unfortunately, well, I say unfortunately, but I think we need like two of you or three of you. You need to be doing this every day. So if you could just quit what you're doing, yeah, and just do this, that would oh, be awesome. Man. Yeah, my wife, my wife may not like that very much. Yeah. I think she's yeah. watching too, so we may we may want to keep that quiet. Yeah, keep we'll keep that on the download. Okay, we yeah. won't we won't say that. But <laughs> you know, I could do this every day because I just love being able to talk to people about darts. I love just the opportunity to play. Like I'm looking at two dartboards right now, and I got to tell you, before I run off to work, I'm going to throw for ten or fifteen minutes because I yeah. just it's there. I was actually um, coming on this one before before we jumped on this morning. I was I was pretty excited yeah. about coming on as well. Yeah, my son was bummed because they had to leave while I was doing the show because normally we play during the morning. And he he came out and he's like, do we play? I'm like, sorry, but we can't. But um, I did want to mention tomorrow I'm doing a, a, an extra show this week. Um, I've got a couple guys from the ADA coming on. We're going to talk about what the ADA has got going on. So for steel tip and soft tip, some actual physical in-play tournaments along with um, some of the virtual stuff. They do a, a monthly virtual tournament. So guys, look for that. It's going to be at 1 o'clock. Pacific Standard Time, so that's two, three o'clock your time, and I think four o'clock on the East Coast. Mm -hmm. um, so uh, I've got they they contacted me; it was the only time they could do it. So we're gonna throw that one in this week. So watch for that. But again, Jason, thank you so much for being on. Thank you to our sponsors for both myself and for uh, the Bearded Dark Guy. We we love you guys. Thanks for sponsoring, and we love those that hang out and watch. I know there's the Bearded Nation, and I've kind of tried to start the Bombardiers. Uh, I keep talking about it, but I go. haven't pushed it enough. But the Bombardiers, hey. thank you guys for hanging out and watching That's with us. First, before we go, one more thing, yeah. man. I want a big, big thank you to you for uh, allowing me to come on. Definitely love what you're doing, man. I, like I said, I don't watch them all live all the time, but definitely go back and catch all the shows. And, uh, yeah, man, keep up the great work. I appreciate that. And it does. It means a huge amount to me. Um, and I think you understand the, there are times where you're like, why am I doing this? You know, <laughs> but at the same time, it's, it's the fans and, uh, just the darts, love the darts. So, yeah, Hey, no again, doubt. thank you for being on. I know you got to get to work. I appreciate you taking some time out of your job to, uh, come on the show and we'll definitely have you back on guys out there. Please check out the beard of dark guy, watch some of the matches and support. All right, guys. <laughs> you guys want a thank bingo you. baby? Can I get a bingo baby before I go? Yo, please, please, please. <laughs> bingo baby let's go all right guys. You guys everybody have a great one we will talk to you guys on the next show have a good one thanks hey man